You're listening to the Zero to Somewhere podcast with Nick Palmashano and Albert So. Oh, man. Everyone back for Zero to Somewhere with Nick Palmashano. My name is Albert Chow in America. Albert So. <laughs> Only Chinese people say that. I've already told you that. Albert So. <laughs> oh, Abba So. Alba How so. are you? <laughs> so you, last week we had our special guest from... Mr. Bing. This week, we've got a new guest. His name's Cam McDonald of The Shoddy. But before we introduce Cam, he's going to be our first, he's going to be our second non vet He's actually our second non vet Second non vet Second non vet yep. but first Canadian. First? So, yeah. I, how do we feel about that? Are we, uh, are we allowed to have Canadians on this show? Well, I told Cam before he, in one of our um, just weekly meetings, I said, in the United States, the textbooks for history, they mention Canada for about three pages over the course of <laughs> yeah. K through 12. That's right. Yeah. It's There's possibly right. three or four pages right. about it's, Canada. It's, it's like, it's, it's a country, it's peaceful, it's above America. Yeah. It's like, the end. it's like there's England, there's France. Let's spend lots of time talking about those two countries. Then like most of all of the history we learn is like American history. If you're lucky, it's like, oh yeah, there's this place called China. They kind of exist. And then it's like, <laughs> Canada, America's hat. <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> but last week we had on the Bing, the guys from Mr. Bing. This week we're going to have on Cam from the Shoddy. So it's we'll introduce Cam in just a moment. Before we do that, let's do a little talk about last week. Last week it was a different experience, I think, for the first time in diesel. Well, we had, we had kind of seen this coming. We've talked about before about improving yeah. the product at all times. Um, I think Cam is a great guest for this episode because he's one of those guys. But before we get to Cam, let's talk about a little bit of what we discovered about Diesel Jack, what we're doing for customers and clients, and what we've experienced for ourselves. There was, I, I'll kick it off by saying there is a lot of people talk about in business and startup lore conversations. They talk about how if you're not a 10 on the customer satisfaction score, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to win over the long haul. Yep. Um, like if you're a seven, you're okay, right? Because and you like to say this as well, people only want to buy their whatever it is, their yep. favorite thing or the best for their yeah. money. Pe people only want their first choice. Like their second choice, they look at and say, oh, that's kind of cool. Their third choice, they're like, oh, that's cute. Not even thinking about their fourth, fourth choice. Yeah. So if you're not here, you're not being purchased. And, and it's the same, the same thing is true with us. And so we have a client, right? A great client yeah. that is only kind of happy with a video that we did. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to be clear, like, with, in terms of numbers, it's a win. Like, they're spending less money. They're, yep. they're uh, you know, making a lot more per dollar of advertising that they spend. Their return on ad sales has improved from previous, like, from the previous regime. Significantly. They're not wasting money on things, but they're not getting what they envisioned. Yeah. And so on paper, I think most agencies would just kind of throw up their hands and say, like, well, we won for you, so I don't know what the problem is. Yeah. Um, but for us, it's always about, like, did we deliver what the customer wanted? The customer set an expectation. You know, we certainly improved their business over their previous agencies by a wide margin, but did we really hit a home run? And the answer is no. Yeah. And, and when when people feel like they have not received, like, you know, happiness is expectation minus reality. Yeah. And so, you know, when we, when we've had so many home runs for people and then we don't hit a home run, um, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. And it so what we've really th started thinking about is, you know, do we want to open up with a brand we're just starting to work with, with an anchor video before we really know the brand, before we really know what works. And there are situations where it's still appropriate, you know, and I think those situations are more where like the brand has a history and you kind of know what makes them tick. But for these younger brands, um, we want to, we want to, we want more at bats. And so, you know, you talk about that a little bit, kind of where, where, yeah, we're, so we where took, we're going. We took a study at, so for anyone out there trying to figure out how to sell their business, sell, uh, sell their product or their service, we really took a look at some of the top performing direct to consumer companies, uh, specifically for e-commerce sales is what we were interested in. Yep. Uh, so we took a look at, and I'll name a couple co companies. I mean, I think everyone out there knows these companies are doing awesome. Like that's not like a secret, right? You can check out pretty glitter. 
They got acquired by Mars for almost a billion dollars. Fresh Clean Tees is a company that sells t-shirts with no patterns, doing north of $50 million online. My poor buddy, Nick, has yeah, been I've designing. Spent, I've spent years. Grinding, designing. Like design, thousands and thousands of designs, hiring hiring graphic artists for years, <laughs> trying to get the best ones in the business. Fresh Clean Tees and, comes and out. Fresh Clean Tees is like, check it out. It's a blank t-shirt. <laughs> With a good ad behind it. And it makes you look good fuck, if your body's not that great. Fuck you, Fresh Team, please. They killed it. They're killing no, it. No, they're killing it. But I, you know, I kind of <laughs> hate it. And you do admit that their ads are kind of smart. No, they've got, they've, they've they've got super smart ads. They have good ads, but I also hate them. Yeah. And know? so we took a look at some of these companies and we're, we're realizing that they, they have a big variety. Mm -hmm. I think they don't... in. I'm not saying we're not saying anchor videos don't work. They do work. They do work. They do. But work. They are clearly investing in more pieces rather than big, fewer, bigger pieces. Like yeah. More smaller pieces. Yeah. So I, I think strategically where we are, where we are heading is we want to come in and instead of shooting one video over two days, we want to shoot 10 videos over two days. Yeah. And, 15, and, 30 second spots, rapid pacing, because I feel very confident that if we take, you know, if we take eight at bats or ten at bats, we're gonna we're gonna hit a couple runs. Yeah. Whereas we can be successful seven out of ten times with anchor videos, and still leave three people unhappy. But if we start small, we start with uh, multiple hit videos, and we start figuring out what works for the customer then it's much easier to say, this is the kind of anchor video that's going to yeah. crush it for them. Um, and so, yeah, constant reassessment. And yep. so here we are. We didn't churn anybody. We got some new proposals going up, but it is us reevaluating what we offer. I mean, it's, and I think that anyone out there who's building, especially a services base, a yeah. services business, because you can pivot fast mm -hmm. in services. Uh, you owe yourself, a, you know, you really got to examine what you're offering and say to yourself, hey, is this, does this, is this a 10? It, because if it's yep. not a 10, your customer will probably find someone they think is a 10 in your price range or whatever your budget range yeah. is, your charge range, whatever the case may be. Um, it's a tough thing to stomach, but I think we've we've already reassessed what we're doing and we're going to market with it now. Like we're in reconfiguring our packages. We're gonna yeah. have to go back to all of our clients, but like, hey, this is the path we wanna walk with you guys. See if anyone wants to jump on board. Um, and I think, I think, you know, the last thing I want to say about this is that nobody hates us more than us, <laughs> you know, whenever, yeah. whenever yeah. I meet entrepreneurs that are super defensive where it's like, Hey man, have you ever thought about this? And, and they are like, there's no reason to do that. We've got the best product. We're the best ever. Bro. You're like, oh, this guy's going to fail. This guy, or at least this guy is going to have some real pain. It's going to be painful. Yeah, we, I agree. Because we we are typically making changes before our clients say anything. Like, we're like, ah, you know what? Like, they're happy, but, like, they should be happier. And and this, this guy, I'm going to give him a shout out. My friend Jordan Collard, who's the CEO of Jolt, he is unbelievable what he does. But he, he really believes uh, feedback is a gift. You know what I mean? Like he loves it. Like, oh, criticism's a gift. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I, I can't believe you can stomach that, but it's true. If you can actually pivot with your customers, I mean, we're gonna have to. We have a couple of customers that are like, we, like I said, we're doing a good job, but we're not doing a ten in their eyes. We're probably doing like seven or eight, like they, yeah. you know. And so we want to be tens. We gotta, yeah. we gotta change it up a little bit. At least once a week, Albert walks into my office with like a doomsday face on. Like, like they kind I, of think we're. I okay. think we've ruined everything. Like, no, well, no, that, you're reading into my face. But I'm like, <laughs> I'll just be like, they don't Al like. Albert, it. we're a really fast growing company at a really, you know, <laughs> uh, weird economic <laughs> time in America. Like, I think things are going pretty well. We can fix some things. Albert's like, no, it's all over. Let's just burn it to the ground. It's like we got a couple <laughs> seven. On the board, we're <laughs> fucked. It's over. <laughs> These people and, only kind of like us. And with they that, only kind of like and us. with that, I think we should introduce one of the biggest hustlers that we're currently working with. So this guy, and let me give a, you, you a little should, intro you for our power, audience. This so, has to be a power intro. Listen, this guy hustles to the so Anna. hard. Yeah, Cam McDonald. This guy hustles so hard. You can't even sell him a content package because this guy's making more fucking content that you can never yeah. dream of, okay? Yeah. He's got influencers coming out everywhere. Then you go to find out, not only is he hustling, creating content, he's got his 
videographer who he, that's what he says i got a videographer i don't know this person's name he's got a videographer with him at all times they're constantly making videos they're constantly taking photographs of the product yep. he himself is he's in that ethos man he's constantly asking his manufacturer to adjust the metal blends yeah because the, the product is designed to puncture metal yep. and he's got oh it's chipping i need to change that like the guy orders and constantly changing that he's got an influencer program he's got a full-time job He's doing all these things. Cam McDonald of the Shoddy. Cam, welcome to the show. What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. That all was right. the intro. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> First of all, and oh, by the way, he lives in Vancouver, and the guy wakes up like he's regularly up at 6:30. He's never late for a call. Like 6:30 yeah. a.m. his time. He's like he's ready to go. He wants to know what's going on. Cam, for our audience that doesn't know or was not watching us on YouTube, tell us what is the Shoddy. It's Which a nice. Fine piece of jewelry. Notice I gave my Italian friend the gold because yeah. that's well. I mean, very it's, <laughs> look, I, I've got the, I've got this beautiful this beautiful olive skin. You know? <laughs> We've already determined I'm darker than you. What's that? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but yours is like it's a different. You know, it's not as nice. I know it's yeah. poor people yeah. brown. <laughs> yeah, Asians don't like you know that Cam. You know Asians look down on dark darkness. Like what? Tan. Yeah, yeah. they like you're too tan. You must be in the field. Yeah, the, the most racist people on the planet are Asians. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> South Koreans. It's true. South Koreans got to be the top. South Koreans. What's that? South Koreans have got to be the top. Oh, I was going to go Japanese. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but Cam, tell I mean, they audience... actually ate Chinese people during yeah, World the rape of the nineteen. Yeah, no, yeah, it was, it was bad. Yeah. It, it, by the way, when I was a kid growing up, my aunt, my aunt was like, she had heard all the stories about what had happened to uh, to China because, like, uh, they were her descendants. She's descendants of immigrants, as is everyone of Taiwan. Like, basically, Chinese people that fled. Yeah. Right. And so she refused to buy anything Japanese in the 80s and 90s. I was like, this is very hard to buy stuff, man. Because yeah. <laughs> like, I think yeah. the only television brand that's not Japanese at the time was RCA. Yeah. And those TVs sucked. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like everyone they had did nice stuff. They're good now. All right. We got to let Cam talk. Yeah. Because Cam, we're, we're talking Cam. about like. You know, I know. My family. Yeah. Lame. Yeah. Cam, <laughs> tell us what is the shoddy. Yeah, the shoddy is actually the company is a year old now. We just celebrated the anniversary. It must have been two weeks ago or so. So that's when it first started, and it has grown so much. And what it is is a shotgun necklace. What is so shotgunning to, for the for the people that don't know what shotgunning is? So everyone that doesn't know what shotgunning is, it's where you crank something into a beer, you open it up, and then you guzzle it back. And you do it as fast as you can. So it's really big in college, after college, you name it. That's uh, it's a huge thing. A lot of people use their thumbs, their fingers to do it. Like savages. Knives. Like savages. Oh yeah, <laughs> they do it all. And uh, I wanted to create an affordable necklace because I was always rocking um, a necklace called Pyra, and I thought they were quite expensive. And it took me so long to save up for one of those necklaces. So I saw that there was an opportunity in the market to kind of hit that middle price range um, at $49, $59 so that people could get into the jewelry game a lot earlier um, than, than later on in life. Because usually as you get older, people in their 30s, you name it, they start buying some jewelry, but no one can afford it when you're, hey, when you're 20, 21, 22, 23, kind of early 20s. So I saw that there was a huge market there. And that's kind of that's how it started. So when you say you saw a huge market, you mean for shotgun necklaces or just for jewelry? For jewelry. And it was it was funny how the shotgunning came about. Do you want me to, do you want me to kind of start from the beginning where, yeah, where yeah, this go idea ahead. came from? No, no. Do it kind of Witcher style where like we never know where you are in the story, but then you tie it all together at the end. I've never seen Witcher. Okay, part before. seven. We're going to set up part seven. No. <laughs> so kind of kind of how this began and, and getting into e-commerce, because again, I've never been in e-commerce before. One of my friends that has a sunglass company, he started um, one of these e-commerce brands. And we were actually sitting at dinner one night and his phone just kept getting lit up. And I'm like, what's going on over there? Like, what, is, what is, is this, happening? And just Is this Krusty Curtis? This, this is Krusty <laughs> Curtis of the Filthy Shades. Shout out to him. <laughs> Dirty Kurt. Dirty Kurt. <laughs> his name, yeah, it's Krusty Curtis. He spells Curtis with a K. So that's how you know he's Krusty. He can't, yeah. you can't, like, most Curtises begin with a C. But yeah. continue. <laughs> Yeah. So we're at dinner and his phone's just blowing up. So I don't know, we were at dinner for maybe an hour, hour and a half, whatever it was. And then he turns and he shows me and he made like $250 as we were sitting there. And as soon as, as soon as I saw that, I was like, this is magical. I couldn't believe that that happened. So as soon as, as soon as I saw that, I said, Hey, you know what? 
I really want to make a competing product. And I was wearing a pirate necklace at the time. And I was like, you know what? There's a huge market out there for necklaces and jewelry. And I was like, you know what? I want to make some kind of necklace. I wasn't sure what was what was going to happen at the beginning. And then I was actually, I was on the toilet. I'm just scrolling through TikTok, <laughs> scrolling through Instagram. Taking a I'm dump. Not, take, <laughs> taking a dump. And I'm not joking. I came across five shotgun videos in a row, like in a row. Someone was using their thumb. Someone was biting the can, like okay. biting. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then someone was shoving a knife. They were using their keys, but it was five in a row. I remember that so vividly. It was five in a row. I'm like, you know what? There's a huge opportunity out there to make a functional piece of jewelry, and just making anything functional and and kind of taking it to another level and doing something different that no one's done before. Because I've never seen any of this. And anyone out there, this is all custom done. Like Albert was saying. Every single time that I make a new batch of these necklaces, there's going to be something a little bit different. So if you bought at the very beginning, that's an original. Even the backings change. So <laughs> but every single time that I do get so, one of these necklaces or, or re renew so, them. So talk talk about the process of yeah. making something. So now you have an idea, right? You have an idea. You see the product. It's spark. You got a spark in your mind. You think, oh, I'm going to go after this. What were you doing at the time? Were you already working? Were you like employed, unemployed, like what were you yeah. up to? How did you get the cash for this? And talk about like your initial investment. Like, yeah, ongoing. so it was actually kind of crazy. I shouldn't even be in e-commerce right now. At the time, <laughs> I had a completely different job. Like I'm not even at, right now I'm working full time. Absolutely love it. But I was at a different company, different job. It was during, it was at the very beginning of COVID. And what was the uh, industry? Uh, it's transportation. So just moving things from point I mean, A to are, point B. Are we are we talk one. are we talking like Jason Statham? Yeah, you like a We're, secret transporter. Like, <laughs> like, do, you, like, do you have any We're idea? Talking transporter. Do, do you We're have any talking. idea who this is? Do you? Do you know the fuck I'm, I'm the guy that knows the guy. <laughs> anyway. We're we're just talking dry vans, flat decks, moving everything from yeah, lumber no about. all the way to <laughs> groceries, you name it. Doing all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I was at that company. I was actually uh, doing my mortgage broker in course at the time. <laughs> of, so, course, of course you were, because why wouldn't you? Yeah, wouldn't yeah. You I'm, I'm in logistics while learning how to <laughs> cut mortgages. So boy. that was the plan. That was the original plan was to go and do that. Um, but I actually, I studied my ass off. We we're, we we're traveling. I was studying while we were traveling. You name it. This is, this is a little bit before COVID. Um, and I wrote the test and I was actually 1% off of passing the test 1% or I would be a mortgage broker right now. So I ended yeah. up failing that then COVID hit and they kept delaying the test, delaying the test, delaying the test. And I'm like, I can't keep studying this. I'm losing my mind. I could, I couldn't do it any longer. And that's where this idea was kind of born. It was again, here in Canada, we've been locked down forever, not anymore, but at the time we we're locked down, couldn't really do much. So I'm just sitting there wondering, what am I going to do? And that's kind of where this whole idea was birthed. Um, and then as soon as I kind of came up with this idea, then I honestly just went to, went to Google, kind of found out, okay, what are the next steps in creating jewelry? And that's kind of where I started. So where did you get the money to do your first batch? So the first batch was... What was it? It wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a ton of money, but it was a few hundred bucks just to get the samples going and everything like that. Um, but that I just forked up. It was a, yeah, just a few hundred bucks. And that's kind of, that's kind of where it all started. And then from there, I just used the sales to keep pushing everything forward. And that's how we went from one design all the way up to, I think there's about 20 now. Yeah. So get, so you go in, you got a couple hundred bucks, you find a maker and the, the guy's willing to make you just a couple, you know, excuse me, a small batch run is best of what you got, right? Got a couple hundred bucks sunk. You get them. What did you immediately do? Did you immediately start getting them in the cut? How'd you get them in the customer's hands? Did you immediately throw up a website? How did you get your first customers to be like, what, what is this thing? So I just, at the very beginning, I made a website. Again, it's all through Shopify. Great to deal with. Fantastic customer service. Canadian. Went on Instagram. <laughs> went on Instagram and just hit the hit the ground running. Honestly, just started uploading photos. Um, and then just kind of searching from there, uh, different influencers. And then that kind of exploded. But it took months. Like 
the in September, I sold one necklace. So this is a year ago. I sold one necklace to a friend. That was it. One sale. <laughs> hey, that's wait, it. When was your? When did you get your first non-friend sale? Like a ra- random guy on the internet, a true sale customer. Yeah, that was kind of middle of October. Okay. So I had one sale September, five sales in October, and that was when that first sale came in. Huge. It was the best feeling ever. <laughs> I don't think it gets any better. Couldn't even believe it. Honestly, was in shock. Was like, someone wants this? Yeah. And then from there, it's just a domino effect of, hey, you, this worked. Keep going. Keep going harder. Did and you- did you think it was going to work great right out of the gate? Like, were you like, I'm going to get this up and it's going to, we're going to start blowing up or were you expecting a slow start? I didn't know what to expect. I honestly <laughs> just, I was happy with the necklace that was made at the time. And then I saw, and then I was like, Hey, well, it could be a little better. Could be a little better. Then when it got in customers' hands, that's where it completely changed. They would message me because there wasn't, I had within the first two or three months, I may have had like 10, 15 customers. That's it. Yep. Yeah. So I would, I would reach out to them and say, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Yep. And they would tell me exactly what happened. I actually have my first shoddy right here. So this is the first one, which it's going to be hard to tell on there, but it's miniature, really yeah, small. Much smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can already tell on the picture right now on the yeah. camera that it is smaller than what you have on your neck right now. Yeah. So it was probably, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the size. And then it just started from there. They're like, hey, you, do you want to make it a little bit bigger? The holes in that, where they're shot cutting beers, they're like, hey, these holes aren't big enough. Yeah. I'm like, okay, perfect. I'm going to increase the size of this. And then at every evolution of the shoddy, that's kind of what happened is just talking with the customers, treating them like normal people. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Some, and a lot of these customers are now friends. Like I talk to them all the time. Yep. Which is unbelievable. I can't even believe it. So because I noticed that I kind of came from a corporate world where you have to talk a certain way, you have to be a certain way. It's the so worst. it's nice being a free spirit, talking to these people, hey, what's going on? And not being scared of the criticism or or the feedback, right? So let me let me, let's let's walk our audience through this 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 change, right? So you got a couple products, you're going out, reaching out one by one to everyone who's got it in their hands. You're not saying an automated email. You're reaching out directly and saying, hey, what did you think of this product? That's something a lot of people would not do. Yeah. Straight up. A lot of people yeah. would not do that because they're scared. You sc- Most people are scared of the feedback. Scared. And they don't want to hear, like, I don't like this. It yeah, kind of shitty. Another weird thing, and, and Cam, I don't know if you've experienced this with some of your friends, but like sometimes when people become entrepreneurs, they, they bring like – like unwarranted cockiness. Like I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the, I'm the CEO. It's like, bro, you're the CEO of like $5,000 a year. Like, yeah. that, like you can, <laughs> you, you, you can, you can, you can write some people. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I don't know, like sometimes people just don't want to, they don't want to put themselves out there yeah. because they, I actually hate the phrase fake it till you make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's so much better to just be like, Hey, I'm, I'm a small business and I'm trying to get better and I'm trying to learn instead of like, I am the CEO of the shoddy, you know, so, look upon mm-hmm. me. So and in, bow. in, um, in the technology world, they always talk about that you should do unscalable things to build your business. Venture capitalists live by this. And one of the big examples they always use is, uh, Airbnb. When Airbnb first got started, they noticed that people that were listing did really bad job of listing their places. So it was really hard to sell. So they decided, hey, we're going to go to your house and photograph your apartment. And most people were like, that's not scalable. Of course it's not. But if people mm-hmm. don't get used to using this platform to yeah. rent properties, yep. it'll never happen. So they went mm-hmm. out of their way to take pictures. And so Cam, we the gate. So he's doing unscalable things. You're working full time at this time. You're in mm-hmm. COVID lockdown. You got a couple grand. You're constantly mm-hmm. retooling your product. That means you have no profits because um, mm-hmm. you're, you're reinvesting zero. in your business. <laughs> zero. Absolutely right? nothing. So Yeah, you, you actually wish you had zero, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah, I remember. Yeah. We're in like, the hole, yeah. Yeah, I, re- I remember be, like uh, I think I spent like 45 grand to start Ranger Up, like the, like the very, you know, build yeah. a website, $36,000 in inventory and some other bullshit. And it was like day one, like you reminded me like that for – Day one, I had like a grand of sales, but it was friends and family. And then there was yeah. like not, there was like nothing for 15 days. And I was like, 
Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> and then I got my first sale from somebody that I didn't know. And I asked my business partner, like, Hey, do you know this guy? Like, no, I don't know that guy. And it was like the happiest day ever. <laughs> and it was like 30, 30 bucks, but, yeah. but that was huge. Right. And then it's a great like, feeling. It's a great feeling, but I mean, it, it, then it was still years before zero happened. Yeah. It was, yeah. you know, it was a couple of years before I got to zero and, and like, there's a lot of self doubt and questioning. Talk about that a little bit, like because you're you are a you know another solopreneur, right? Mm -hmm. You 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 have not yet decided to try to build a team, so there's mm -hmm. like employees. There is mm -hmm. a lot on your shoulders. So what are you thinking mm -hmm. when you when you've sold ten shotties in the first month and you're out a few grand and like where's your head? It's, it's just, I, I don't know. I fully believed in it the whole time. So I had a lot of people coming out to me, friends and family. Sometimes it's, it's the worst when you're telling your ID to people because they're just like, <laughs> you're, I'm 28. Right. And they're like, man, you were way too old for this. You should have done it in college. What are you doing? What are you doing? They ask, yeah. They're like, what are you doing with your life? Like your girlfriend just moved in. This is happening. That's happening. And you're doing a shotgun necklace. Like yeah. get out of here. And it was, it honestly, that pushed me even harder. It was like, you know what? I gotta, I gotta put a stamp here. I gotta prove all these people wrong. And I just fully believed in it the whole time. I saw, I, I, I don't, I always saw this growing and maybe, I, maybe me visualizing this and fully believing it. And I think it's just at a certain point when you live and breathe it. Like I wake up, first thing I do in the morning is go on my phone, send out messages, probably for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And, and then, then I start and, my day. And then shotgun I do that a, at night too. And then shotgun a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I thought you were saying, first thing I do, I take my shotty, I crank one back. <laughs> That's what gets me going. But yeah, no, it was it was honestly just grinding it out. I knew it was gonna come. And uh I I I don't know where it really turned. I do know there was a few moments where there was viral moments where I was in shock of different sales coming in and whatnot. But for the first little bit, it was all the different connections. Like coming back, um, I met Lance probably, I think it might have been in November. And I, I actually created a shoddy and it's called the Mullet Man. And it <laughs> is Lance. It's Lance. It's his yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we started advertising that on the mullet that changed my life. And that's <laughs> what kind of started. I got introduced to another, another friend of his um, who runs Shotgun Squad. They shotgun beers all day. So I made a shoddy for all them day too. All <laughs> that's day. Their video. That's all they do. Yeah, that's all they do. That's I would, all the I would be great post. at that job. I would be great at that job. I could do that's, that. Yeah. Their, their feed is just constant shotgun. So that's how it kind of started. And that was November, December. And then from there, I was like, okay, I've got something here. How do I get more eyeballs on it? And then that's where I started sending them out to, to everybody. Yeah. So as we many met. people as I when, could. When I met you, it was roughly, I think, February, and your sales were, I mean, it's okay to say now, they were under $5,000 a month at the time we met, and we, we were talking, and I remember talking with you and being like, man, like our services are going to eat away all your profits. Like, it's going to be super expensive. And then he goes, and I remember one thing about Cam, I was like, and I remember telling Nick directly, I was like, but this guy knows his, like, he, I, I don't know if he's in finance or what, but he's got all of his unit costs he knows fully loaded costs. He knows how to shift them. He knows how, like, he's very dialed yeah. into the numbers. Talk about, like, why were you so dialed into the numbers? Like, who taught you that? So what happened to you at the beginning? So there's different, I, I knew kind of where I wanted to go. And I knew that you needed X amount of dollars to go ahead and market and advertise. And I actually do have a background. I did get a degree from a BCIT out here in, in Canada and Vancouver. We don't know what that is. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No yeah. Clue. Anything, is that good? Is that good? We don't that, know that anything about school. Canada. That could be a clown school <laughs> for all I know. <laughs> it's, you know what's funny is it's not a university and it's not a college. It's right here in between. So it, it's we completely We call those scams random. in America. That's like, that's like the University of Phoenix? What is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It so is. I got actually... I got a marketing management uh, professional sales diploma there. And then I ended up getting a business administration degree there. So that was kind of an introduction to this whole world. Awesome. Awesome. I, I will say the only, the only things that I know about Canada are like from bachelor parties I've gone to or, or UFC fights that I've cornered. 
Those those are the only times I've actually gone to Canada. Oh no no, I went when I was corporate. I went to Canada once because John Deere was uh, thinking about buying a fertilizer company in Canada. I had to do a. Did big you come work. out here to Vancouver or were you out in Toronto? I was in Toronto for the for the fertilizer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a hub. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I was in Quebec City for Tim Kennedy's fight, beating Michael Bisping. That was a happy moment. Great, great moment of your life. Great. I mean, just one of my, <laughs> one, a top five moment. Uh, and then uh, uh, Montreal for several bachelor parties. That's basically my. Beautiful there. Yeah. What, else, what, yeah. else do you, what else do you need? I really don't. I mean, that's what I know. About, <laughs> that's, you know. And uh, John LaJoy, big fan. You know, he's a Canadian no comedian. Idea. Yeah. Was that? That's is that an it. Author? Yeah, he's a Canadian comedian. He's I very funny. Know. No idea. Yeah. So you're dialed into the numbers. That's the one thing we noticed throughout the gate. And William Shatner did a movie with him. There you go. Cam is going to be the next guy in your movie. <laughs> I hope so. Cam, Cam's got that like. I feel like Lance, Vivek, and Cam should have like a <laughs> like a TV show. You know. <laughs> I still yeah. want to go visit Lance in, in Florida. There, like, it's a, it is an interesting dichotomy of how they sell, though. You know what I'm saying? Like Lance sells the party vibe. Like he's yep. got a look going for him. Yep. Cam sells a more premium party vibe. Yep. He's got his look going for him. But like, I want to walk our audience because, like, for for any entrepreneurs that are out there, because you meet them all the time, people yep. that want to start businesses. This, that, that's, I want to go back to the fact that you were so lasered in on your numbers because I remember coming to Nick and saying like, you know, I don't want to take this kid's, this, I called you a kid because I'm 40, right? Yeah, we're, uh, because we're old. Like you're 28, <laughs> we're like, that's a kid. Um, but, you know, we were like, but I think he he's on to something. Like he knows his numbers. He knows the risk. He's got the cash. Like, we should we take him on? Talk about like, so you were doing all this forecast planning. What? What did you need in place before you made that big order? Because you eventually, by the time you called us, you had cash. So you're like, I'm making a big order. Let's go. Yeah. So kind of what happened, and it's it's really strange in Canada, the shipping is so hard to do for e-commerce businesses. And I, I guarantee any Canadians listening that do have small businesses, it is almost impossible unless you're shipping larger items. But if you're shipping small packages, it's a nightmare. you're going to get dinged. 15, 20 bucks a Not pop, yet. right? Wow. So there at the very beginning, I was shipping my jewelry in boxes, really nice boxes, but they were too big. So the shipping costs were 15, 20 bucks a pop. And I was just for passing that over to, for a couple pardon of me? Ounces. It, it's a couple yeah, ounces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nothing. Yeah. It's so, nothing. Al, and, Al, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm go, sorry. On, go on, go on, go on. I was just going to say, Albert, it is with Ranger Up t-shirts. Yeah. It is cheaper for us to ship to like South America, Europe, uh, Asia. Not Europe anymore. Can't be. Than it is to ship to Canada because there's so many shipping surcharges and the documentation is more complex. So Europe? like, Europe? Yeah. Like for real, like you actually, when you're shipping to Canada, you it, there's actually documents that you need to sign. Like if you, like the, the, the equipment will print it out, but then you still need to hand. It's ridiculous. They really don't want us in there. That's the thing. That, that it's hard to send to Canada. Want us in yeah, there. you have to sign all the customs forms, and it yeah. takes forever. Takes forever, like when, especially when you're packing these orders yourself. Yep. Holy. So at the very beginning, I kind of I was I didn't know what to do, and again, this is just me talking to random people. Yeah. Just I would go into Canada Post. I'm like, there has to be a better way, and. One of the women there said, hey, you know what? I do have someone that does e-commerce. Try the letter mail. She's like, it might not get there every single time. It's going to save it's gonna, but, but it's going to save you time and it's going to save you money. So at the very beginning, I'm not joking. It was letter mail and it was just like ship it out and no cross tracking. my fingers. Yeah, you have yeah, no tracking. Customers would be like, where's my shot? He'd be like, I don't, like, I don't know. know. I don't know. I'll send you another one. <laughs> <laughs> it was cheaper for him to send these, like, another ridiculous, one. ridiculous <laughs> um, transit times, right? Because some would show up in a week. Some would show up in two or three weeks. You never really knew. Yeah. But again, that saved me from doing those forms. It lowered the cost. It, I think it cost me maybe $1.25. It just took a long time. So it went from $15 down to $1.25. And I'm not joking, that change completely changed the business and allowed me to have cash to move forward. Because as, as every e-commerce or entrepreneur knows, cash flow is the most important mm -hmm. thing. And that's what allowed me to, to bring you guys on. But it was funny, at the very beginning, I would just be packing these orders, 
I, at some point, I filled up every single mailbox around this <laughs> whole district here. It was probably four or five mailboxes. And I would get notes because, again, it had my address on there. Yeah, yeah. I'd get notes from the mailman being like, hey, if you pack one more mailbox, I'm going <laughs> to just ship everything back to your house. Like, that's it. <laughs> so so he's- I was battling the mailman. I was packing <laughs> these orders and just trying to get them out as fast as I could. But that so- one change, I still actually owe the Canada Post woman. I owe her a bottle of wine, but uh, you reminded me. So can you can you um, like can you not have a pickup done at your place? Is that not an option? You could, but I was again looking at the numbers. It costs X amount of dollars to get that person there, and I probably could have done it. Um, I don't know a few months in before getting a fulfillment center. Yep, I could have done that, but I again it was a cost, and I didn't want to. I yeah. didn't want to take yeah, on yeah. that cost. I so, just wanted to so, keep it as, so this as guy, low as possible. So if you're listening, you're paying attention to some of the things Cam talks about. Number one, he's selling a, a upper, I would say upper market. You know, you're not quite selling luxury, but it is a premium price point. I mean, mm-hmm. most it's people, not cheap. It's, it's not, not cheap. cheap. You yeah. know, in 56, like I said, 40 to $60 for a piece of jewelry. Um, then you also were very conscious about getting your cost down. Talk about, let's talk about like, generating demand because that is something like everyone of course leans on us for it was interesting with you because cam came to the table it's like i know how to sell my product i don't know how to distribute advertising and mm-hmm. i need i just need some advice on what mm-hmm. works in e-com because i'm doing these things i think they're popular but i don't it doesn't really move the needle help mm-hmm. me guide my content path down because you have done a really good job and you know, definitely share some of the numbers you've done now um, when you start talking because our audience was, I think yeah. they're going to be impressed with, with this. Yeah. Some of the things you've, you've done. Like, talk yeah. about how you got that demand up. So I, I'll just go month by month just so I, I don't know, may inspire some people out there. But in August, that's when the first prototype was developed. Again, this is a year ago. Zero dollars. September, 60 bucks. October, <laughs> $250. And nice. I was, I was pumped. I was like, yeah, I can go buy a little keg dinner or something. <laughs> and then November was $850 or so. Oh yeah. Um, December was, I think I just hit over a grand and I was like going crazy. And you got to remember I'm from Canada. So this is in USD. So I'm yeah, thinking okay. about the exchange rate. I'm thinking, yeah. wow, this is, <laughs> this is yeah. insane. And then January comes around and this is, uh, this is where the business kind of took off. So let's go back to December. December is where I started on TikTok and it completely changed the business. A lot of people don't like TikTok because they think it's for a younger audience when every single person is on TikTok. So I started TikTok in December. And as I'm scrolling through these different videos, I would see these different influencers with a ton of engagement, a ton of views. And I just started reaching out to these different people on Instagram saying, hey, I'd love you to rep my product. That'd be fantastic. And I just started sending shoddies off to to different people. And come January, um, I had someone where a a video actually went viral of them kind of showing the necklace off, opening a beer. And that was basically it, showing the different sizes, 20-inch chain, 28-inch chain. And this and, is essential because you can't advertise alcohol consumption. Uh, that that was one of the things that we learned the hard way with you is Cam's product supports alcohol. Unfortunately, in advertising, no one can drink alcohol. So how are you going to demonstrate shotgunning? Exactly. Through influencers. Exactly. And that's actually, we can talk about that after, but that's, remember, we had a struggle at the very beginning. Of, sure did. <laughs> and yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah, he got shut down. And, and every video that goes out. <laughs> Cam got shut down. We had to, we had to pa- put a pause on things to get him back yeah, online. <laughs> yeah, for a month or so. Um, but yeah, January was crazy. I actually, I still remember it to this day and it was, it was insane. And I think this is, I, I think every entrepreneur kind of knows when there is that turning point and someone catches it or there's that there's that momentum that gets going but i was yeah i was out skiing and the influencer is just like yeah you know what i'm gonna be posting this video i said all right yeah go for it and that video caught and it got about half a million views in i don't know maybe two hours or so yeah and i checked my phone i felt it vibrating i thought someone was calling and i'm like (laughs) what what is going on here and it was the sales coming in. And I think in two hours, it was close to two grand. 
And after that, I just made that. So I made two grand right there and then, which was probably more than I made the following year. You know yeah, what right, I mean? Right. Yep. With yep. the 250, 850, whatever. And I couldn't believe it. And I was like, okay, this is obviously working. Let's double down on this. And kept doing that. I uh, met a few different other, I, I kept setting product out. Again, I would just scroll TikTok, find out people that I thought was, I just thought they were funny. I thought they were good people. And I was like, you know what? I want to work with these people. Message them. They're like, yeah, I know. That's awesome. They love the product. And then from there, some of these other influencers actually introduced me to a ton of them. And yep. that's kind of where that snowball effect came. And then ever since then, influencer marketing is absolutely incredible. Yeah, so for all you people out there trying to sell things that you're banned from advertising, alcohol consumption, alcohol-related products, gun products, mm -hmm. CBD, the reality is you if you are not willing to get on the grind like Cam and talk to people who make videos like this, yep. your odds of success are down significantly. Yeah. It's because you can't advertise this stuff. But an influencer, they don't stop influencers from being popular because it keeps – eyeballs on platforms. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like we've mm -hmm. met a couple CBD people. Yep. We've met a couple, uh, let's call them, you know, sin, sin businesses, tobacco people. Yep. They don't want to do it. They don't. They don't want to go reach out to all these people. I'm like, oh, well, well, Diesel Jack does. Like, well, this is our fee. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to pay that. It's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to say. It takes a lot of work. Give us an idea. How many hours a day are you reaching out to people? Uh, like I spent on Instagram. So, Let's say I wake up at, I was waking up at five for a while. I'm 5 a.m. Yeah, 5 a.m. I'm back to six now. I'm <laughs> just too tired. <laughs> I'm back to six. And I will, I'll spend a good 30 minutes literally in bed, just messaging people, whatever. And then I don't know, throughout the day. And then when I get home, it's probably like, I'm looking at, I'm not exaggerating four to five hours a day, minimum. And of then ju of just weekends, messaging. Just, of just, just, just messaging. Weather. Yeah. yeah prospecting and th these aren't just influencers these are if like again i i come from a background of sales where if you have any inbound contact fantastic like a follower will come and follow shoddy they're yeah. getting a message they're getting oh, a wow. message hey wow. how's it going appreciate the support you're writing so, everybody i'm writing everybody everybody that comes in because it is so like in my in my background i do business development i'm always yeah. doing outbound calls so if anyone ever comes to me that's like, you're giving me the whole turkey on a plate and I'm going to eat it all. <laughs> right? Like, it that is must be a Canadian of. saying. I've never heard of right? it. <laughs> That's some Canadian shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> but when they're coming in, I'll be messaging them. So I spend probably, yeah, four or five hours a day messaging Seven days people. a week? Yeah. Uh, for the most part, yeah. Like, I'll be golfing, let's say, on the weekend. And when I'm going around the turn hole nine, I'll be on my phone messaging people, any followers or any messages, whatever. And then after the round, back on it and then spend a few hours doing it. But yeah, I love it though. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like work. Like it might yeah. sound, and you got to remember, I work full time too, but the four or five hours, I enjoy doing it. Yeah. There's, so, there's, so what's the tipping point for you? When, when are you no longer an employee and you become a full-time entrepreneur? I don't know yet. I, I honestly don't know. Cause yeah. it's, there's so much opportunity uh, with my line of work right now, just with COVID and everything. Yeah. And I, I, enjoy, I love it too. So everywhere, kind of everything that I have going on, I, I just enjoy everything. There's no, there's no end goal. It's, it's more of just kind of living the grind and I don't mind doing it. I, so, I'm happy doing it. And so we got, I got to We got to catch our audience up though. Cause you haven't, you, you are a very diversified person. So your full-time job is in uh, freight forwarding and logistics. You're, you got a, your side hustle is the shoddy of which you're doing a lot of sales a month now <laughs> and growing that business of which you spend four to five hours on, on that business on top of his eight hour day. But then you're At also, a, do, a do you want to, do you want to talk sales or do you want to keep, do you want to keep that? Yeah, we can talk sales. I was I'm just getting to January where, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We cut him, we yeah. cut him off. Yeah, yeah. We but we're, off. We're, but we're, we're, we got, you're a real estate investor as well. Is that right? Uh, I do, I do private equity. But I'm <laughs> going to do <laughs> a little bit. I dabble just. A I, I bit. dabble. I dabble in private equity, <laughs> a, a, a job that people aspire to for years. 
I just so get got- introduce these people and I say, you know what, I'll, I'll try it out. And certain things have been working. So I just go in that, but real estate's coming up pretty soon. Like so rental it, properties and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You got he's got some rental properties now. He's ready yeah. to put on market. So he's got real estate. He's got his private equity side hustle, his shoddy side hustle, and his full time freight forwarding and logistics, uh, full time gig, which is a very in demand job. In uh, like that's like that's a that's a business that's constantly in labor shortage. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like people are yeah. probably paying you a pretty penny to do that. All right, so you're gone on the grind. Sounds like you basically don't ever stop working. So your January numbers. Let's go. January. So January is where that viral video, it hits. Then that kind of, it's funny because that hit at the, I think that hit at the end of the month. So it kind of trailed off. And when you do have these viral videos, they, you pretty much, you can kind of guarantee sales. If the sales are coming in from that video, kind of guarantee it for three days. That's usually it goes, it goes big that first day. So this this rush and urgency for people to go viral, they need to know. About three days of benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it can be it's like it can be big though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you, it was like hit it kind of at the end of the month, then it trailed off into February, and then it was like maybe half of it the uh, the second day, and then maybe half of that the next day, and then it kind of got back to normal. So it was it was five k, ten k, so ten thousand dollars. Actually, it wasn't ten k. It was nine thousand nine hundred and fifty bucks. Oh something. yeah, and yeah. it drove you fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah, like one shotty short. One shotty. I'm short. not. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I've had that, and I've gone on and bought something myself just to get it. I'm like, I, I can't handle it. I'm, buy, I'm buying my own supply. You know. I think I spent a hundred and fifty bucks getting it to nine nine five zero. And then I thought someone would buy one. one. (laughs) I was like, you're kidding me. One time. And I gave it a good five or six hours, really five or six o'clock at night. Yeah. yeah. One person's going to buy. Yeah. Yeah. Just one and nothing. nothing I I would have posted like, please. Someone buy something. I will shoot this cat. <laughs> I really you see need this cat. I need. I'm going to shoot it if no I one buys this. I need this for me. <laughs> I actually, I did. I told Lance, I'm like, put it on your page, Thigh Huggers. Put on Thigh Huggers page. Put on mine, Filthy Shades. So we had them all go at yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, so that was February. Then, so January, March, March was actually it came back down to normal because you had no more supply. Yeah, when you, yeah, you reached I sold out in March, out you had everything. no supply. Yeah, so that was down to five k. So it was January, February, March, and then April is when I'm pretty sure that's when we all started working together, right? Yeah, yeah. April, and because we I tried had- to pre-sell them in March, and we were like, it was, it was, it was, it was nerve-wracking for me because we 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 set up the ads, we take a look at this existing content, we get everything set up. He's like, let's invest a little cash and see if we can pre-sell it. And like two weeks go by, and we had pre-sold nothing. And so I was like, I'm cutting off the ads. I'm saving your money. And at this point, I'm like, fuck, did we fuck up? Like yeah. this guy, yeah. he, we couldn't pre-sell a thing. But Cam- and that, I mean, it, that was all you too. So yeah, it was, it was really your fault. <laughs> but Cam is the eternal optimist. Cam, Cam is the eternal optimist, man. He like shrugged his shoulders like, well, fuck it. Like when it comes live, it'll go live. Let's see what happens then. Like he yeah. was totally yeah. fine. Like, yeah, this experiment didn't work. Shut it off. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I mean, at that time, your order was already coming. It was like on the water or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was on in route. Yeah, no, it's just it's just testing and trialing it. And then yeah, it was crazy. So that month, again, I had another viral moment where it was nuts. It was someone just grabbing a shoddy out of a bag. Like I'm telling you, the pouch that I have it in saying, go buy this shoddy. That's all he said. That's all exactly what Albert's doing. Just boop, <laughs> pulled it out. That video went viral too. And I've never seen anything like it. It was like how does four thousand video- dollars in sales one how day. Do- how does that video go viral? Like, did I, you I ask no yourself? Idea. Cause I would have been like, when I think about like hours and hours I've spent on content <laughs> and like some motherfucker pulls, pulls out, out a neck, like, Hey fellas, buy <laughs> this. And, it, and like, you know, you make 12 grand or whatever. Like I would have been, I would have been like happy, but sad, you know, like, why do I, even, I would have been like, why do I even try? You know, like every video after that would have been like me, like, Pulling it out from, you know, <laughs> like, ooh, buy this, you know, like armpit, like, hey, what other places can I pull the shoddy out of? But- <laughs> right? You think you just literally <laughs> took it out of a bag, said, go buy this. I'm like, yeah. we put so much time into making <laughs> cool videos, <laughs> and the cool videos don't take yeah. off. All yeah. it took was, uh, <laughs> puts it down, 
And the rest is history. So it was like four thousand, three thousand, then two thousand dollars in a three day span, which yeah. is insanity. Yeah. So that that month ended up turning, and it was crazy because it was like it was just flat, and then yeah, this yeah, huge it was surge. It was Albert's failure, and then that guy, <laughs> that, then that guy pulls a necklace out of a bag, and boom, you're back in business. Yeah. And again, that month was uh, twenty eight thousand. So it went from five, ten, five, twenty eight. Yeah. And then. It was, it kind of, I think it dropped down to 22, up to 26, up to 29. And then the last month was the biggest month that, uh, that we've ever had. That was just under 33 grand. And then September is a little bit slower, but I think we're, we're coming up like 24 grand this, this September. So it's been a wild ride. It's crazy. September, October are always a little slower, Yeah. but, but I would expect, here's my prediction. Are you ready? I'm ready. 55,000 in November, 70 in December. Oh my. If that happens, I'll cry. We'll that's get on so, another podcast. So many, I'll cry. So many kids in college are now seeing this. That product. is my prediction. So you should mentally prepare for, for that. So well, we have the inventory. So we're, uh, <laughs> so this guy, <laughs> it, it better happen. <laughs> so this guy reinvests, you know, the, Along the way on that growth, you also, one of the things I think about having you on the show is we've had Lance before and Lance Liggett in episode two, I believe for anyone mm-hmm. that wants to check that yep. episode out, go ahead, but plug myself, zero to, zero to somewhere podcast, what up? Um, you got, he, he loves to do everything himself, but you are so involved in other things. You've decided to outsource a lot of the stuff. Mm. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I recommended a three PL to you. I don't know if you actually, I think you went with them, but I talk did, about yeah. your, talk about your decision to go outsource this stuff, because that's something that entrepreneurs struggle with. Like, should I outsource or should I not? You obviously did it. Talk about your decision behind that. What made you do it? How did it work out? Um, kind of fill anyone who was curious about three PL. Why'd you do that? Yeah, well, I was spending like at one point I was waking up at five in the morning, packing orders for probably an hour, hour and a half. And then I'd come home and pack orders for like another hour and a half, two hours. And I wasn't spending any time doing what I should be doing. You know what I mean? Yep. All the money generating activities. So wasn't doing that. And on top of it, I had to figure out the shipping because they started <laughs> going missing. All the packages. <laughs> I would Jeez. send out 50 packages and like five would go missing. And I didn't have any. I would just send it, out another the, one. The mailman, the do. mailman just started throwing every other one he away. Was, fuck like, him, yeah, fuck McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, he's just packing his own stuff and selling shoddies on Craigslist, you know, right? He's, so. ju- he's just angrily looking. You know, just <laughs> ripping him in half. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, at a certain point, I had to figure out my shipping. So I needed to lower those costs because yep. I had I was sh- I was shipping at such volume that this, the whole letter mail thing wasn't working and I couldn't go through this whole customs because it was taking me already. Let's just say two to three hours a day packing orders. Yeah. Two or three hours you yeah. add in writing, like signing off customs and filling out those sheets. I would have oh. been doing it. That would have been a whole full-time job. I, eight I get hours it. A day. I get it. So I couldn't do that. And I had to go find an alternative. I also, knew at a certain point, once I hit a certain number in my head, it was about 20 grand that I would go and get a fulfillment center. They take, they take care of all the shipping. 95% of my business is in the States. So I got a fulfillment center out in Chicago and the, the shipping again, shipping in Canada is a whole different ball game. As you were saying too, it's so expensive, but yep. shipping in the States is relatively cheap. So not as cheap as a dollar 25, but it's, it's pretty it's, good. It's reasonable. I'm, yeah, it's reasonable. Exactly. And I'm hands free now, so I can focus on doing other things. And just getting that fulfillment center has changed the whole game. How? Like I can now focus and I enjoy it a lot more at, at, at a certain point. I might be super optimistic, but packing orders at five in the morning when you oh, no. sleep in your eye <laughs> yeah. and, and trying to just do yeah. that. And then you have to go to work after and then you come home and you're like, the first thing I have to do is pack more orders so, is defeating. So, so <laughs> what the decision that I made and the decision that, that Lance has made is to hire help and mm-hmm. then, you know, and, and then eventually turn that into like a warehouse and the whole nine, but you went the, the a different direction. Can you talk a little bit about why you made that decision? Cause I think that is the first major decision that most entrepreneurs have to make once they have initial success. <laughs> do I hire somebody? It's, do I me? want my first employee or do I want to kick all this off to someone else? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So I don't like it right now. You're looking at my warehouse. This is it. <laughs> this is the warehouse. This is where all the shoddies were stored and I was packing them. And I, I don't have the space to hire an employee. So I was, one of my friends was already using this fulfillment center. He said it was fantastic. Great service. Costs were low. Fantastic. They store it. The storage fees weren't bad. That's where I made that decision. Hey, let's get all the product there. And again, it was just hitting those different thresholds. And it was just, again, it was the time per day. I yeah. think that really pushed me to say, you know what? I have to outsource this. I have to spend my time doing other things. And every entrepreneur, they'll know at that point, do I really need to be packing these orders or do I really need to be doing this or that? Yep. And that's that time where you can just push it away. Again, it, it's going to be difficult at the beginning. You're going to have issues, but you just have to trust the process. And once you, once you take that leap, everything is so much easier. And once that flow gets going, fantastic. Then it's like, I, I'm not joking. I'll be, I'll be golfing or something and I'll see these orders going out. And it is the best feeling ever. Cause I remember <laughs> back, in those orders, back in those orders. Right. Um, so yeah, it's just, honestly, it's just trusting the process. I think yeah. every entrepreneur, I don't know if they, I felt like I knew again, I, I, I can't talk about like, what, how did you, when did you know, did you outsource yours at a certain point or he hired? Yeah. So, I mean, we got, we, we had at, at our doing it ourselves peak, a uh, 25,000 square foot warehouse, uh, a ton of employees. You know, we were, you know, during the holidays, the post office would come three times a day, drop off those, uh, uh, the, they're like, like they're eight, eight, eight foot tall bins, Yeah, you know, that where there's like a canvas thing and we would fill, uh, we'd fill like eight or nine of those a day. The post office hated us. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just like, you know, but then, um, you know, I had a VC event a couple of years ago and, and those guys, uh, you know, they bought 51% of the company. So Tim Kennedy and I oh. are now, we're, we're minority owners now, but we, we are still involved in the process, but they took, um, they took all the ops because they, they built a 250,000 square foot factory warehouse oh. in Columbus, Ohio. So it's not, they're, they're managing not just our shipping and fulfilling, uh, and printing, but you know, for multiple brands and individuals and so forth. So for me, it was weird because I spent, you know, we spent over a decade just making shirts, shipping shirts, you know, being able to solve a customer service issue in a minute, like, you know, Hey, I didn't get this shirt or this shirt's ripped. Like no problem. Like five minutes later, one of our customer service reps is literally shipping a package with like an apology and, you know, like we're on it. Whereas mm -hmm. that all changed when, you know, it went to Ohio. Now it's like, there's, you know, now it's like, Hey, there's this customer service issue. I need you to handle this. Like a new order needs to get printed and sent out. And, you know, so there are challenges. Like it, it mm -hmm. makes, it makes certain things but, harder, but on Christmas, I'm not worried about anything, but you know, yeah. your, but your you know? story is a little bit more of an, I don't know if you would have done this exact same thing. If the technology today was available to you then, because oh, no, no. refill technology has gotten significantly better. Yep. It's yep. gotten significantly better. So like 3PL technology, the, printing tech has changed. Everything has changed. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So know? like yours is a, you know, necessity, I think required it a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. To build your own. But like modern yeah, there day. Was no there was no there are more to garment. Like there's more solopreneurs now than ever. People yeah. that don't mm -hmm. carry an employee that are doing over a million uh, bucks. They, there's there's more than ever. I was reading about that stat. And it's because of services like this. But you had to, you had to of course, make a leap. How much money did you leap with? Because I remember I was like... I, yeah, you know, you were obviously asking advice from a lot of people. I remember suggesting, hey, do a small run. Don't don't <laughs> send like your fucking plane over there full yeah, of yeah. shoddies. Because yeah. they have to check it in. They gotta catalog it. They got mm -hmm. you got chess systems. What was your like tolerable test level? Cause I said, test something you're willing to just lose. I'm just <laughs> trying to think of when I made that change. It it would have been it was after actually that crazy Jennifer March. It was after that crazy April that I ended up just saying, you know what, this is insane. I've got to do something about it. And I probably sent out, I don't know, I don't know how many shoddies I had, but probably like half of them over there. And I knew kind of the, the more popular ones that were selling. So I sent those ones over and then we started just testing, trialing, and then it worked and then just kicked them all over. <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't anything crazy. 
like my, just cause of my product, the size of it, it's really easy to ship. P, uh, they, they're organized really well and it's just, Hey, pick and pack. And it, it's super quick. So there was never really any issues, um, uh, making that, making that change. Lesson for all you entrepreneurs out there, make something very small. <laughs> small light inexpensive yeah so should everyone yeah. get in the jewelry game i mean it sounds like it <laughs> sounds like everyone should be in the jewelry stay game. out of there yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so so what advice would you give to somebody that's kicking around being an entrepreneur so i actually before i did all this i had a different company that probably could have been quite successful it was a tech company but it was basically, it's, it was called a VAR, which is a value-added reseller. And be, what you're doing is you're dealing with a rep that's selling it to the final customer and you're the middleman. So you're basically just brokering the deal. And that could have been really successful, but I was just not interested in it. It did yeah. well, but it was, uh, yeah, just all this technology and you had to memorize this data security here this encryption service here that I hate, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. So I, I couldn't do that. But the one thing I'd say is if you can live and breathe it and it, and it excites you and you want to do it, then run with that idea. Cause you'll wake up at five. Like I'm excited to wake up to mm -hmm. see if there was like any sales in, in the middle of the night or whatever happened. Yeah. If you can wake up and you want to do it, then go for it. Whether it, it might fail, it might not, but if you're persistent doing it, go for it. You just got to love it. I, I love that, man. Like, I, I completely agree with that. Um, you know, like I, I made a lot of money in the corporate world, hated every minute of it uh, and almost bankrupted myself starting Ranger up. And it was still like the happiest professional time of my life, even though even as I was trying to figure out how to eat, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, like you need to, you know, you spend so much time at work that like, you know, it, it's, you know, people get in this mindset of like, oh, I just say, I have to grind it out. Mm -hmm. That that turns into five years, which turns into 10 years. And like, at some point you've been grinding at something you don't like for a lifetime. And like, well, the other thing is you get accustomed to is the lack of risk in your life. Yep. So then the yeah. more safe you feel, the less likely you'll take a risk. Yeah. Because I noticed that like, you know, 100%. We're, now 40. we're now 40. Like we know a lot of people that are our age that like, they like making hundred grand a year. Yeah. They like having mm -hmm. health insurance. They like, you know, yeah. like cowards, you know, like nine to five jobs, <laughs> like you know, a nine to five job. It sounds kind of nice. I'd love to yeah. not work after yeah. five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but it's, it's one of those things where you get so used to the money, the lifestyle, and then you, you lose your appetite for risk. So, and I think people can justify in their minds, like, wow, they'll just, why they're willing to do something. Maybe they're not that interested in, you know yeah. what I mean? Cause it's yeah, just, yeah. it fits their life now. Yeah. And there's no and, criticism. Like I'm not yeah. one of these people that tries to convince everybody no. to be an entrepreneur. No, you gotta be like, Kim. I'm you the gotta, opposite. You gotta be the guy that wants to wake up yeah. at 5 a.m. to do some shit. I'm the opposite. Mm -hmm. most, most people come to me and they're like, I think I want to start a business and I'll spend like an mm -hmm. hour telling them, Here's all the ways that your life is going to be hell, you know? <laughs> yeah. And saying it's not it, easy. Yeah. And if, like, no. if, not, and if that scares you, it's not a good thing to start. Yeah. But if you mm -hmm. get excited about it. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. It's, it's so rewarding. And on top of it too, it, it has made me a lot more successful in a lot of other parts of my life. Oh yeah. Improving here, improving there. And you really figure out, I, it, it, you're kind of finding yourself too, right? Doing entrepreneurship. Cause you're on that grind. You're getting so much hate. You're getting so much praise. You're getting everything. Right? It's all coming at you. It's what you want to take in, what you want to give out. And I recommend it to everybody. If you, at least yeah. try it, right? You don't that's have a, to do you don't have to quit your job to do it. That's the one big thing. I think that's the one big myth. You don't have to quit your job. You can yep. do it on the side. Everyone has time. It just it just matters how much sleep you want to get. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, what does yeah. your boss think of you? Yeah, how, and how much Netflix you want to watch. <laughs> No, no, every, every, right. Everything, everything's yeah. a choice. But I do think that was like a super valuable comment though, because, you know, I had an executive job in a, in a fortune 100 company. And I don't think I fully realized how little I really knew about business until I was running my own business. And so like, 100%. it's, it's so much easier for me to give people advice that is valuable having made all of the mistakes and like really know the pressure of making a payroll or having to buy inventory, manage inventory, like all those things are, 
they're incredibly hard. Yeah. And, you know, like you said earlier, cash is king, right? When I was going into business, I was thinking about profit. Mm -hmm. I don't... I don't, I almost don't care about profit now. And that's obviously not true. We all want to make a profit. We all want, you know, but, but as for a startup, mm -hmm. profit is not as important as the ability to have cash available because you can have the most profitable business in the world. But if cash is not in hand, everything falls apart. hundred percent and credit and credit. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like, and we're still in startup mode and it's amazing to me, like, I have run entrepreneurial endeavors successfully for, I don't know, 15, 16 years, whatever I'm at, you know, and, and, uh, he's at about the same number and like the banks and everything are still like, you know, you can't have a loan. You can't have it until like the two year mark or still if, mm -hmm. or if your cash is concentrated to just a handful of customers or a high yeah. risk. It's like, there's it's a lot like, of challenges it's like, to get this credit. Is mm -hmm. not, this Meanwhile, is Meanwhile, some dipshit in college can easily get a credit card. Like no problem. Like they'll get a personal <laughs> credit yeah. card, like nothing. Yeah. Isn't business that insane? Card? Yeah. Versus credit cards. Like, actually a, hard to come like by. somebody with no credit history can get five to 10 grand on a credit card. Meanwhile, we're like, Hey, can we get a business credit card? Uh, we've made $2 million in 15 months. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and they're like, oh, no, it's too high risk. Like, come on, bro. Come on, man. Wait, I mean, our you know, are high. I don't know. The, the, only, the only guys that come through always are American Express because American Express looks at like your entire life. They're like, oh, yeah, you've been with us in multiple businesses since 2007. You know, you're good to go. Like <laughs> yeah. everyone, el everyone else is like, you know. Fuck you. Come to me at the arbitrary time of 24 months, and then I'll give you limitless credit. <laughs> That's crazy. Kim, I got to ask, though, what does your boss think of you? Because well, you, you work full time. He's got to know mm -hmm. you do this because you're all over TikTok. You've got video views that have 18 million views. What well, honestly, he's, he's a young guy, too. He's, he's 27. So he, How is he in charge he of a freight forwarding company at 27? He's beast mode. He's a whole different level. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I'm telling you, this he's a whole different level too. Um, which, which it, by I, the way, we actually it, believe it or not, we don't even talk about it. We don't even we don't talk about it. Like I'm just there doing my thing. He does his. I bring in the sales. Which by the way, no that's questions. another hidden life advice gem. There, work for someone who embraces you doing other things. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He's yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. He's an entrepreneur yeah. too, right? Yeah. yeah. He knew when I first came on. I was talking about the mortgage broker and whatever. And he was completely fine with it. He, that's, yeah, he's a cool guy. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So I got to ask, is freight forwarding like the hotness in Canada? Because like, it's like, you're talking about like two hardcore dudes doing freight, freight forwarding. And, like, <laughs> it's like, like, you know, it's like, it's just, it's, it's not a, it's not a big thing here. You know, it's no, the it's biggest huge. industry. It's huge. It's yeah. like in Vancouver alone. It is so competitive. It's, it's crazy. Everyone that it, everybody wants to forward freight. <laughs> everybody. Wants to forward freight. It's the most boring thing ever to talk about, but it, everyone has to do it. So it's, it, I don't know. I don't even know how I got into it. Honestly. It do you think, do you think, fell in my do you think Albert and I should forward freight? <laughs> don't get into it. <laughs> don't get it. Stay away. Stay as far, as far away as possible. You guys would hate it. You can't no, the one thing, actually, you know what's funny? You, should, you guys should try bringing on a transport company and doing marketing for them. <laughs> we did. Because if you can do that, we did. You can do anything. Listen, you guys listen. have a, a transport we, company. We should throw our pitch because looking back on it, it would have been a, it, it might have been cataclysmically bad. But there was a company <laughs> that dealt with loads, payloads. And oh, we yeah. pitched, oh God! We, <laughs> oh yeah! We we, can, we pitched the idea because we found out how much it costs to get. So Ron let's Jer not say what their actual name is, but I didn't say the company's name. But we we pitched. But their the name, idea of Ron Jeremy. Their name did have load as part of it, and we and he was like, "I don't care what you do. I want it to be crazy." And so <laughs> we we know Ron Jeremy because he was in our movie. And uh, so we pitched. Awesome. Nobody we, moves more loads than me. <laughs> Ron Jeremy. <laughs> and, he was in the commercial? He no, was no, going to no, be in the commercial. It. It never so happened. we reached out to him and he said yes. So we were going to film this commercial. And then COVID happened. And then he got and then charged he got, with like then he got charged with sexual and assault and, and battery and everything. <laughs> so, that would have been really bad. So we're actually really happy that like, yeah. like yeah. COVID saved, uh, you know, that that would have been bad. Which... 
But the commercial was hilarious. Listen, listen. that would have been so funny. <laughs> it's a good script. It's a good script. Nobody moves more. Nobody loads moves than more us. loads than us. But for those, you know, Cam, I want to thank you for joining us on Zero to Somewhere. Thanks for sharing your story of how you've you know done this, and of course. We look forward to a holiday season. You heard the numbers, 5570. 5570, my prediction. 5570, mark it down. If it doesn't happen, Nick it's will, Albert's it's Albert's fault. Nick will make you a <laughs> I don't know. Nick will do something for you. But if you want to follow Cam, it is at the shoddy TikTok. We'll go to TikTok. For those of you guys that want to learn how to master TikTok, visit Cam at the Shoddy Necklace. That is C-H-O-T-Y. By the way, when you first sent me anything. I was like, the Chody, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> the shoddy necklace. Give him, a, give him a look. If you follow his page, it's not hard to figure out. He's got a ton of influencers. I don't know how he does this. He's constantly convincing people to shotgun beers, Trulies, Seltzer. He can only advertise like the non-alcoholic drinks, but you know, he wants you to keep doing it. Give it, a, give it a look. Yeah. yeah, he's got, if you want to learn more about the shoddy, go check that out. Cam, thanks for joining us, man. You're you're in a world where I think a lot of um, a lot of people that yeah. talk to us they want to be in. I think we got to give them a, a parting thought before we before about we what? do our breakdown about what about anything. What's your parting thought to the world of entrepreneurship? Uh, make sure make sure parting- it's, make sure it's dramatic and give me like a like a like a deep Canadian voice. You know, like a. The Real. party. You guys, what do you guys want? You want one of these? Or, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Everyone that's... needs to shotgun beers. <laughs> Everyone needs to buy one. Always the salesman. Always the salesman. 10% off. That's right there. Shoddy. And oh, by the way, we it's dark out, but me and Nick will shotgun a beer for you and put it at the front of the video. How's that sound? Oh, that's fantastic. That's the hook. That's the hook. Oh. <laughs> that's Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and make sure it's super close. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Cam. you. So we had Cam on, young entrepreneur, yep. grinder. Yep. Not not on the gay app, but, you know, like, yeah, he yeah, works yeah. really hard. No, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. He might be. Like, it's, you know, like, we're not, we're I, I don't not, know what he's doing. Asking. We're not, yeah, he does whatever he wants. The guy works hard. What'd you, would you, would you gather from his story? Because this guy's gone from, I mean, he's done this in yeah. less than a year. I guess we're on a year now. He's done yeah. it over the course of a year. I, I think I think that when you have people, I mean, like, you know, it goes back to what you hear most investors that are worth a crap say. It's not about the idea, it's about the person. And yeah. I'm not saying that the, the shoddy is a bad idea. It's a good idea or people it's wouldn't be buying it. It's not something I would understand. But if, you know if I mean? somebody pitched this to me, yeah, would I, I think I need to invest in this? No. Would I expect him to have the success he's had? No. no. But relentless focus on solving a problem is one of the things that you always see with successful entrepreneurs. Like... I've sold 10 of these. I'm going to write all 10 people yep. and figure out, is my product good? And not worry about if they tell them it sucks. Like clearly somebody was like, it's too small. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe it was, it was chipping. It wasn't you yeah, know, holding he, up. He has stronger mentioned metal. he's changed the metals in this yeah. thing over time because of tarnish or wear. Yeah. Because people are, I mean, they're going hard in the paint, man. These guys are shotgunning a lot of beer. Yeah. And, and you heard his numbers at the beginning. They sucked, right? Yeah. Zero, 50 or 60 bucks. All from friends bucks. and family. Right. And then boom. Yeah. Like it takes and that and that, you know, that's that that was my experience. That's been the experience of so many people that I know is like you have to have a focus and a belief and you've got to, you know, you've got to play the long game. And if you heard him, one of the things that he hit home is I enjoyed it even when it wasn't working. Yeah. I was excited to do it even when I wasn't making money. And, you know, we've talked about this in the past, but to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to enjoy the journey because so much of the journey is not fun. <laughs> it's yeah. hard work. You're not making money. You're scared that you that you made bad decisions and that you're never going to see a return on your investment. Your mom's making fun of you. Your friends are like, hey, do you want to go out? And you're like, I can't because I can't afford a beer right now. Yeah, yeah. I got to uh, message these 35 influencers who won't get back to me. Yeah, you know? I want to be ignored by 35 influencers. <laughs> so, you know, his story is the kind of story that I think entrepreneurs need to hear. Because if you think about it, he just excitedly told us about probably seven, eight months of failure and then stirring success. Yeah. 
but most people quit in the first couple months. Like I spent, you know, whatever he spent, 20 grand, 30 grand yeah. and made well, 500 bucks. Well, he's also the consummate. And we, we said it before in other episodes, he's the consummate salesman, right? Like at his work, he calls people like he's constantly yeah. selling. Yeah. It's, I think this is a big mistake people have is they think that because they can make something that people will buy it. Man, nobody buys nothing. You have to be able to sell you it. Sell if you it. can't figure out a way to sell it, you're yeah. going to fail. And I think that's a hard thing for people to stomach because he's figured out a way to sell this. I mean, like you can think about it. people will say like, well, influencer, I want to go buy influencers. But like you think about who he, what he talked about, he went after like who can influence my product. Yep. That's something a lot of people don't think about. Yeah. I mean, we hear all the time, like, they just blanket it. Like, oh, yeah. I need an influence. And also, consummate entrepreneur, he, he, he was excited telling us about all the influencers that worked. But I guarantee for every one that worked, there were 50 that blew them off, <laughs> didn't work, whatever. He sent a free you know? necklace to, and they never touched it. They didn't do yeah. anything with it. Like, and so that's, like, that's what you guys have. Like, you have to think about it like that. Like, if you go into business, if you go into business for yourself, you have oh, to. Oh, I've seen the coupon codes, by the way. It, yeah. It's concentrated to just a handful. It's really only a handful of influencers that move product. Yeah. Everyone else moves. Yeah, up. yeah. But but just a relentless focus yeah. on solving the problem. And the other thing, the last thing that I'll say, and then I'll let you wrap this thing up. The last thing that I'll say is the other thing that I see so often with entrepreneurs, and that includes us, right? Yeah. I get asked all the time, like, oh, you know, Diesel Jack, Ranger Up, writing a book. You're on, you're, you know, you're doing the Save Our Allies thing. Like, like, where do you find the time? Well, it's where, which, what are you doing with your time? And so many people waste 60% of their time messing around with, like, I've got to watch Netflix or I've got a game or I've got, I mean, it's fine to do those things. Yeah. Like, but for me, like I watch, I watch Netflix, but I have my laptop open and I'm doing something. It's like background noise. Would you rather start a side business or would you rather sit on the couch and chill? Like these are decisions yeah. you make. I mean, it's fine if the answer is chill, but like if you want to be an entrepreneur and actually make it work, chances are, unless you're wealthy, you've got to do what I did or what, what Cam did. Yeah. And you, you got to, you got to have that side hustle first. It creates a couple more at bats. Like yep. you're stealing some hours. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, it's the, it's a story that will repeat itself. Probably. Uh, we just have not, you know, whether it's bad luck, I don't know why, but we, you know, all of our clients seem to be very hardworking people. It's, it's amazing how that works, yeah. right? Like, yeah. no, we it's, have yet to have that client that's like, hey, I kind of made this thing. It blew up. It could use some marketing. I don't want to be involved. I, yeah. We haven't met them yet. I know that that's the, that's, that is the story that Hollywood and like yeah. those, those tech entrepreneurs like to sell, but I've literally never met anybody where that has been the case. It's always like I was miserable and then it started working and then I was more miserable and then it really started working. And then I thought I was going to lose everything and then it finally worked. Yeah. Well, I did, I did meet a person. I did meet a person related to the, to uh, her, her dad had invented um, and, and got the patents for uh, easy passes. Oh, okay. That that's pretty, right? that's pretty good. No, no, but it's, but it's still years of grinding. Like, oh, yeah. like the guy you got he like the guy was working on this project for, decades before he figured it out yeah and of course he as soon as people got hold of it they bought it and like licensed it of course but yeah. and you know like um like um our our investor kirkham his partner the payments company like, yeah yeah years of grinding yes years overnight. of grinding very years fast. of grinding and then instant kajillionaire but yeah but it didn't yeah. happen without all Did, the years of grinding. didn't happen so, overnight nope so that's the that's what will happen closes but, out albert closes yeah. out strong if you want to do something you better. Uh, I mean, I don't, don't have you great ever advice. Know that you're my hero. Close Listen, it out. No matter. Uh, I'll, we'll close it out I like this. No matter what it is you think is going to work. And number I could one, fly stop saying. A shoddy. Don't listen to advice from people who have not done it. Because you big, are the wind that breaks open my can, two, so I can drink it. Yeah, sell a lot of shit. If you want to watch me and Nick shotgun a beer, stay tuned. Thank watch you. Us on YouTube. Thank Cam. you. Thank God for you, the shoddy in Nick my is a terrible can. Bye-bye.